something more than what I already have. I worked as an assistant manager for a company in London for a while, and then I also realized I didn't have enough time to look after my kids, and that was putting me under pressure. And I wanted something to do for myself that will allow me also the time to spend with my kids and give them the right education that they need. Because working as an assistant manager in a retail company in London, you know, you do long hours, you finish really late, you are not in control of yourself, you are not in control of your time, you are not in control even of your family because the work keeps you all the time outside. So I started thinking, what can I do to be in charge of my home? I started thinking business. And I looked at the skills I had, and I started thinking, how can I put it into practice? And I put my passion into practice. I can organize events. I'm into PR and communication, and this is how I started my company. And uh, I know I don't have nothing but to teach the Nigerian women. I know they have great skills in terms of trading, in terms of everything else at that level. And I just want to say, you should keep on doing what you're doing already. Thank you. What is it that inspired me, myself? Because I think women are hardworking people. Yes? Women are what? It is women that go to those farms and farm, not men. Oh, now wow. Hey. Anyway, the next thing is I wanted to improve people's lives. Yes? I wanted people to get learning and to get educated. And I wanted learning to take place in my community where I grew up in a little village called Joro. When I looked when I was a child and I saw the poverty, I was despaired from a little girl. And I used to look, and in my side where I grew up, people were of middle class. And in the other side, what I saw was poverty after poverty after poverty. And as I grew up, I hated poverty because I used to get confused. Why is some, where, what is happening? Where is it that some people are more richer than others? But I didn't know then, but I now know. So when I grew up, I got an opportunity to go to United Kingdom and I furthered my studies because I wanted to understand what is it I could do as a woman to improve the people of, or to improve women and to improve my community, yeah? And I started beginning to find answers. I actually thought about it and thought about it and thought about it and I was wondering why is it that we are always being given money from Western world and we don't, we also have our own monies and how can we uh, understand this kind of uh, aid given uh, relationship? So I started to investigate the situation between if aid is really needed or aid is not needed. Inside me, I have compassionate, I'm caring, I love to support my community, and I have developed a program which has assisted so many kids and assisted women in my village and assisted um, learning in my community. That is what inspired me to do this. So women, what we know we need is inspiration. We know that the women who have spoken to you today come to you from a point in their lives where they were inspired by someone, motivated by something, to do something different about their lives. What I wanna do at this point is to give each of them just a moment, a real quick moment, because we've pretty much run out of time, um, just to wrap up and say something inspirational to you, uh, just a pearl of wisdom that they would like to leave you um, on this afternoon. So we will start with. Women, we've heard it all. I used to say that Instead of giving me fish to eat always, why not teach me how to fish so that I can place food on the table for my children and for my family? The adage that says, 
train a woman, you develop a nation. We have few of our women here, like we have the only chairman, who is still now the CTC chairman, more in terminal. We have um, Barizazi, Chief Barizazi. We have some other um, essays to the governor. Giving back to the society, I'm sure that they have some girls and some women that they have given back to. They have empowered today. Women, we don't need to have, we need to start from little. Whatever little that is given to you, one thing that should be paramount in your mind is to how to place food on the table for your children to eat. Sometimes we, we, we deprive ourselves of food so that our children should eat, isn't it? When your child does not eat, will you eat? Even our husbands, sometimes we deprive ourselves of food so that our husbands can eat, isn't it? And that is how it has been. We are that passionate. And so I want to say that you don't look at one, any of the women here, some of us there, to say, I want to be like this overnight. You will start somewhere. We had the story of Honorable Binta. We have to start somewhere. Some of you who know me here, you know how I started. And so we should learn how to start somewhere. That way, I'm supporting our women, whatever, whoever that woman is. If that woman is out to do something, please, fellow women, make sure that you rally around that woman and support that woman because that woman will remember you before the man there will remember you. The woman is passionate about issues concerning you. And so when the woman is out there, don't think about her family, but think about that woman and always think of what she will give back to you at the end of the day. Thank you. Well, we will, I want to say I really thank God for our sister, what's her name again? Honorable, Honorable Binta. But we want more women at the Senate. We want more women at the Parliament. This is my message for the women today. We want more of you there. We want more of you at senior positions so you can influence the policies being taking, uh, being taking place there so that they will emphasize in girls' education and women development. Thank you. I think um, in my excitement with being here and seeing you all, I totally forgot to tell you who I am and where I'm from. So I work for an organization called Emerge Poverty Free and we have been working for over 20 years and we work predominantly in East and Central Africa in post-conflict and fragile states. And over the years, what we've done is capacity build local organizations so that local people can support local people and what we've learned from the women that we've worked with over the years is that the first thing they want is to have enough food and enough money, enough money to sustain the household and enough food to eat for themselves and the house. And actually what these women have been asking for most is education, resources, tools and capital to predominantly start businesses themselves. And whether that's in agriculture, whether that's in food production, whether that's you know, every area that they wanted, what we've seen most is that women want to be independent, they want to be resourceful, and they want to have the control that they need to be able to live the lives that they want and to be able to set that example for the lives of their family and their households and their communities. So I think, yes, we need to continue to, you know, work at a ground level to empower communities and empower local organizations that work with those communities. But as my sister Amber said, we need more women in politics, we need more women in business, and we need more change at the top. So greater change will happen for economies and communities if you have women at every level. And so that's what I'm most passionate about, is women's development and women's progress. And I've dedicated you know, a lot of thought and time, and I want to dedicate the rest of my life to it. So actually, I think going forward, as women, you, we need to ensure that we're in those positions of, of influence and those positions to make decisions and those positions to ensure that actually our families and our communities are always at the priority of policies and economies. Thank you. Women 
I just want you to know 